So hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody from the load community that has joined us today. Thank you very much for giving us the time to chat with you, as always, on this nice Friday, July 8, um, 19, July 19. And uh, so the topic that we're going to discuss today is, is a support topic. It's going to be a very interesting topic. It's going to be all about the wallet. Um, we know that a lot of you already have uh, a fair um, experience with the wallet, but we do have a number of new people uh, joining us and and many of them really need to know uh, and get uh, used to how the wallet works. Um, some issues are uh, very easy to miss and and that's what we're here for. We're going to give you a nice, uh, nice uh, tour of the wallet and address some of those issues. Uh, we have with us today uh, Dan Schaefers and Dan, good morning. How are you, my friend? Good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Good, good. And we also have our great Grant. Grant, how are you, man? I'm doing pretty good. Morning, good. everybody. Excellent, excellent. So it's been a, a hot summer for us here in uh, North uh, North America, Northern Hemisphere, Canada, and it's going to get hotter this weekend. So let's get this ball rolling. Um, we're going to, uh, I'm going to pass the mic to Dan and Grant. Uh, they're going to drive this boat. I will be uh, here just in case uh, anything is required, and I'll be manning the operation of the wallet. So, um, Dan, take care of my friend. And, uh, and uh, guys, um, if you, for whatever reason, you cannot uh, log in into this one uh, today, you know that you can always uh, click back on the RSVP button and get a replay of the video. You also get an email from, uh, from StreamYard uh, letting you know that the video is available for replay. Um, uh, and, and in any case, uh, Dan, take it on, my friend. Thank you very much for that introduction, Ham. And uh, <clears throat> basically, yeah, all we're really doing today is we're going to do a review of this wallet and just show where things are, how to get to them and, and how they relate to, you know, maybe troubleshooting or for sending, receiving transactions, that sort of thing. So now, you know, I, I, I just want to add that, you know, we had this vesting or we had this uh, wallet beta testing phase that never really got done. So the wallet is still in beta testing. And uh, for the most part, the bulk of it works. And if you encounter issues while you're navigating the wallet, then, you know, really show us what you're doing, take screenshots if you can, and then that way send it into support. We can then do a ticket, uh, you know, for tech to have a look at and address the issue. So if, uh, if you all could do that for us, that'd be great. I am following a bit of a script today, uh, just because, just to help keep me on track. And uh, let's see here. Okay. Okay. So go ahead, uh, Hum, and log in to your wallet. We'll start there. There we go. Okay. So this is what you call the landing page of the wallet. This is the main page that it, it defaults to when you log in. And also, as you're navigating through the wallet, if you want to reset back to the landing page, you just click on the home button top left. Okay. So now here, when we're in the landing page, we have a choice. We can either focus on categories on the left hand side, menu categories, or we can just click on the vault assets on the top right. So for right now, what we're going to do, yeah, for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to start at settings. So if we could start at settings, hum, please. Perfect. So here we have four categories, preferences, security, terms of use, and app info. All right. Really out of these four, there's two of them that are quite important the security uh, tab and the app info. From a support perspective, we always like to start at app info because what that does is it confirms that we're actually on the correct wallet, the latest version. We can see if there's any networks that are offline. As you can see here, the load card is offline only because you know the, the, the load card is still really in transition. 
We have a, a new wallet being developed. I think the load card may actually uh, nest there, but for right now, it's offline in our wallet. Now, we want to make sure that you've got the latest uh, version, and uh, we generally like to start there. So now that we've covered that, let's go to security. Okay. Now, as you can see here, in security, you can update password, you can enable your two-factor authentication, 2FA, you can change your PIN, you can show your vault wallet recovery phrase, and reset your vault wallet. Out of all of these, oh, and, I, and actually I should probably touch on open KYC and all that, you know, we're still working on this wallet because really load is no longer involved in KYC. And so, you know, it's quite possible that this is no longer applicable. We still, I, I haven't had any word on that, but this is why we don't focus on it. So for right now, we're going to, sh uh, we're going to just focus on the two categories on the right-hand side. So now when you first set up your wallet, you wrote your 12 words down, right? And now probably the first thing you want to do is go here and show vault wallet recovery phrase because we've encountered where people had their original 12 words, couldn't log into the wallet. Sorry, you know, got a mistake here. And I would ask them, hi, is there one word that looks like it's misspelled? Why, well, yes, there is. One letter was enough to keep them from logging into their wallet. So they wrote it down wrong. And so now just double check, have, you know, that you've got the right words written down correctly. We actually do have a login details and beneficiary form that we're, we're still trying to figure out. Do we want to embed this thing into the wallet? Is it just going to reside on the media library? Like, where do we want this thing? And so that's still in the works. However, if you really want to gain access to this form, just kind of come in to support and ask us for it, and we'll just send it to you. Okay, now, the next category is Reset Vault Wallet. This is actually a really great category because we have a couple different scenarios that it applies to. So now, people accidentally created more than one wallet. So now they've got three wallets they've created. They've got their original wallet. They've created two more wallets. They've got their, their recovery phrases because you have to have your recovery phrases. And, and really, you know, uh, what's really important to know is that one wallet address, one set of 12 words, and they're tied together, right? So now we're not going to get into this right now. I'm just pointing it out that if you've got multiple wallets, you go to reset vault wallet. Basically, there's just some hoops you got to jump through. Yes, okay, I understand. And 12 words, you know, restore. You're always restoring your wallet because if you want to restore to the 12 words you have, that's the general idea. You do not want to create a new wallet. If all of a sudden it's, it's giving you 12 new words, stop right there, back out of that, and try it again to restore. Anyway, uh, it, this is for people that are looking for assets. They've got multiple wallets, and they have to go track down their assets. So now this is how you would do that. Now, we also have some people that purposefully create a second wallet. They have a reason for that. Maybe it's a savings account for the daughter. Maybe it's who knows what it is. This is how you would navigate to that other wallet. Okay. All right, Hum. So let's have a look and see here what my script says. Okay. I think uh, security up info, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now. Okay. So the next area uh, we're going to go to is profile. So we just click on profile. All right. So now, this is the area that has your contact information. You'll see there your load ID, okay? You've got your email address, all of this. What we've encountered a number of times now is you used a work email address. And now, you know, your email address has changed, but you've lost access to the email address, or you created a nota and you now lost the password. You can't access that that inbox. And so now uh, this is a problem for people because they're trying to update their email address and they can't. OK, another scenario is you updated your phone and now your Google Authenticator for 2FA 
okay? You're having to reset that all over again and you can't access the account through the new phone. And so now you've got a 2FA blocker. So email blocker, 2FA blocker. What we ended up doing was creating a, a tutorial that removes load from the liability and the security risk of changing uh, your email address or disabling your 2FA. So now the tutorial, uh, we have it in support. So if you're stuck with that, just come to us. We'll send you the tutorial. And basically the idea is that you create a new email address. You're now creating a new account, but you're restoring your wallet with your 12 words, okay? So now if you've got another email address that has never seen a load wallet, then you could use that one. I just recommend in the tutorial, no, just go ahead and create a new Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, something like that, because you want to stick with an email provider that's going to be in, that's going to be around for a long time. That's why just a Gmail email that maybe you dedicate to your wallet, something like that. Just make sure you write down your password to access the, uh, the inbox. So, that is basically what I wanted to say about updating emails. The other thing I'll also point out here is that we see a logout button. Well, if <clears throat> what I suggest to people now is I say, look, in your browser, Windows browser, top left, you've got this icon, right? It's a refresh icon. If you just click on that, that refreshes the wallet right back to the six digit pin page. Right. And so that's a great, easy way to log out of your wallet, because when you click on the logout button and we're, we're kind of that's another one of these features that's being revisited. We have to figure out what we want to do there is that it, gets, it asks you to do all kinds of things. Are you confirming this? Are you sure you want to do that and stuff like that? We just want to log out. Right. And so that's the refresh icon. And uh, I guess basically that's the uh, that's basically all of it for profile. All right. Now, the next thing that we're going to touch on is vault assets. So top right, hon, please. Okay. Whenever we click on vault assets, these are banners. Okay. This is a banner that shows an amount, a dollar value, something like that. Some of them show zero. That means there's nothing in there but it's a general banner. So if we click on the load banner at the very top, there's a dropdown with subcategories that shows up and it's Ethereum, low classic uh, token or low token classic on Avalanche. And uh, I just want to also point out, this is where the vote token has been nested. So if you're looking for your vote tokens, you're finding it under the load banner. And so, just be, just be uh, aware that when we're asking for specific information, you may, you may need to click on the load banner to actually access that information. So the next thing that we're going to touch on is transaction info. All right, hum. So go ahead and just pick any category that has, any banner that has a value attached to it. So what do we have there? We have Ajax on, is that Avalanche? Avax, okay. So now you've done a transaction and now something happened to it. You're coming to support. We're saying, hey, send us the transaction details. So as it turns out, you know, at the very top a transaction, that was the one that had a problem. So we click on that. Now we have a transaction details page. It turns out that a screenshot really won't suffice here because we maybe need to copy, paste into a, uh, a token search engine or what have you. So if you place your cursor at the top of the transaction details next to the T, the very top, just left, left of the T. <laughs> so, so Hum, if you could put your cursor to the left of the T at the very top transaction detail. Right, and you press uh, left click down and then you scroll down, okay, all the way to the bottom. All the way, and there you go. Now, right click, copy, 
now you're going into, yeah, right click copy. The general idea here is you're copying what you've highlighted. Now you go back to either the, the, um, if, 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 Dan, if I might say also, if you click on the transaction, also gives you the copy, right? So okay. the copy function okay. also. All right, so yeah. that'll copy the whole works too. Perfect, I didn't know that. Good to know. Good, so, so that, thank you, Hum, for that. So this is where you find your transaction details to send to us, you know, if, uh, for troubleshooting purposes. And if we hit that left arrow next to transaction details, brings us back to here, and you'll notice that under my address, there's a partial address there, and there's a copy icon to the right of it, right? So if you need to send an address, uh, that particular address, now you can just hit the copy icon, copies it all, there it is, okay. So now if we hit the uh, uh, left arrow, brings us right back here. And so I think the next area we're gonna touch on is send and receive. Okay, so now I've got a scenario. My house is full of stuff. My garage is full of stuff. And I wanna sell some stuff for AGX. So now, this is a great example of a peer-to-peer -peer transaction, okay? And it goes something like this. I got a real nice oak bedroom suite in the garage. I gotta make room in the garage. So I run an ad. Hi, I want a thousand AGX for this, for this bedroom suite. Well, as luck would have it, Grant saw the ad. So Grant comes over and uh, has a look at the bedroom suite. Yeah, I like that. Nice, beautiful. Okay, great. He and I are standing four feet apart. I have to send him my receive address. So, hum, let's just click on receive first. Uh, category, yep, receive. Yeah. Receive? Yep, yeah, click on receive, yeah, thank you. And now we're going to go AGX coin and... Uh, I want I want Avalanche. So there's my receive address. So I copy the address. Well, Grant is standing right there. So I text it to him. Now Grant has my receive address. So now he opens up send. Okay. And he opens up AGX Avalanche. And he's, he's going to put in a thousand. He's going to right click and, and uh, paste my address. Okay, now at the very bottom here, we see slowest, regular, and fastest. So slowest and regular are actually the same price. So when we click on regular, for instance, it gives us, is it six point, it was 0 0.0695 cents gas fee, AVAX gas fee, right? So just under seven cents. But if I click on fastest, it's like 7.5 cents. So half a cent or so between them, if I really, really need to send it there fast, okay? Otherwise I just go in regular and it's seven cents a transaction. So if you've got one US dollar of AVAX, that's good for about 14 transactions, okay? Just so you know. All right, so now Grant sends me, you know, he just clicks on uh, scroll down, hum. Oh, yeah, but now you would go continue. And now that transaction will complete. I would receive it in my wallet, okay? And now, that, and now we just did a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. It's a great segue to explaining how receive how uh, wallet addresses work. Okay, so when we just click on home again, and we click on vault assets, and all these banners show up, virtually every one of these assets, with the exception of Bitcoin and Syscoin are all the same address. It's the wallet address. They are all the same address, okay? So when Grant sends me AGX Avalanche to my wallet address, it knows where to send it to what address, and it knows it's AGX Avalanche and sends it to my AGX Avalanche. That's how, that's how it works, okay? And yet, so there again, 
that wallet receive address tied to one set of 12 words. Okay, so this is why it's really, really important to track and, and, and keep that information safe, secure, because if anybody gets their hands on it, or if you lose it, it's trouble. Okay, now, the next thing I guess we're going to touch on is uh, <laughs> okay yeah here's one so we have people that have sent uh load assets to metamask and they were sending a large amount uh, a large amount, okay, north of 400,000. And uh, when you're doing a significant transaction, that could be as much as 100, okay? In this case here, Grant and I should have actually done a test, okay? Because if you're dealing with a wallet that you think you got the right receive address on that end, you're going to test that. Yeah, you, you don't want to <laughs> send the whole works over and all of a sudden, ah, it's not showing up, right? It's a problem because now you're going to come to us. We're going to say, well, you need to go talk to them, right? And uh, it gets into stuff like that. So I just wanted to, to make a note about that. And also, too, you know, our wallet is on Avalanche. It runs on AVAX gas, right? Buy, send, receive, swap, vest, stake. These are all transactions. They all require gas. And of course, as we know, the gas is like, the fees are like seven cents. So you just have to figure out how to get some AVAX gas into your wallet. And uh, and so that's, a, I think, a great segue to now over to Hum to talk about buy, sell, and swap. Thank you, um, Dan. So, well, buy, um, uh, Bias is, uh, is also very uh, intuitive, very user-friendly. Um, you want to buy silver or gold, uh, you click on the buy button, select the asset that you want to buy, click on, in this case, let's buy some AUX, and you have three options. You can buy with credit card, with a debit card, bank transfer, or crypto purchase. Credit card has a low acceptance uh, rate because uh, some banks are still funny about uh, digital assets. Uh, but the debit card has better um, uh, better rates, so better acceptance uh, rates. So I think yeah, as much as you can uh, use debit cards, so it'll go through easy, easily. Uh, credit cards, um, sometimes you get lucky and you'll get through. Usually it's 30 to 40% acceptance rate. Debit card is north of 80, 90% acceptance rate. So it's, that's one option if your region and your bank allows it. Uh, bank transfer is the easiest one for larger quantities, let's say um, uh, $5,000 plus, then you can use bank transfer, it's convenient, it's, it's, it's affordable, not too pricey, so bank transfer works. And then you can do it by um, clicking there and follow the instructions, you will get the form where, where to send the, the, the funds, and then that will, uh, once received, then the assets are going to be transferred to your wallet. So that's the easy part. Uh, the third one is a crypto purchases. Uh, you can buy with uh, crypto, you can buy with Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDC or USDT. And then once you move forward, it's also very user friendly. It lets you know where uh, to send your USDC, USDT, Ethereum or Bitcoin. And then uh, as soon as it's received on, on Loads Vault, and then the Load Vault team is going to deposit the asset. So let's do a quick try with a credit or debit card. Um, you choose the singularity, which is the payment processor that Load is using right now, and um, and click there. Uh, the wallet is connect. If it's not connected, you will see uh, a button that says connect, and then you'll see this turning from false to true. In my case, my wallet is being connected already to singularity wallet, so it's it's connected. Then you just select the amount of uh, AUX that you want to buy, and then you submit your order. And then it's going to open the, the payment processor gateway. And it's going to give you some options. That's, those are the options that you have. You can pay with debit or credit. Uh, you can transfer from Binance if you happen to have a Binance account. 
um, if you have enough AVAX in your wallet, it also shows you this, this option, which is a lot easier because it takes the AVAX from your wallet and turns them into AUX automatically. This can also be done in the swap. We will speak about it later. Same case for USDC. So once you do that, select the payment method that you want. And you have two processors right now, MoonPay and Transact. Uh, one of them gives you slightly more uh, for your for your buck, for your dollar. But in this case, let's use uh, the one that charges you the less for amount, the same amount. Let's do that. Proceed to pay. Uh, you're going to get started. It's going to tell you the steps that you need to continue and then go to the process. So it's going to ask you for your um, credit card or debit card. And it's going to, uh, if it's the first time that you do that, then you're going to have to um, do a slight KYC. It might ask you for uh, a picture and the proof of ID, um, depending on the processor. In this case, you select the currency that you want to buy with and continue. Uh, won't continue because I won't buy anything physically today, but the next step is basically punching your, um, your numbers. Okay, so let's go back, let's cancel this transaction and let's go back to uh, the other uh, option, which is buy AUX with a bank transfer. And same, same, you buy your um, AUXs and it's asking you for bank transfer, a minimum of 20,000. AUXs is $1,600 US, review the order, and then tell you more or less what's gonna be and how much you're going to receive in AUX. And it's going to be sent to this wallet of yours. So these AUXs are gonna be sent to your wallet. And uh, we have this promo code because uh, it's built for future promotions. So in the moment we don't have any promo codes, but uh, if there is, then you will receive a promo code for a discount or bonus or whatnot. Confirm the transaction. And this is where you will receive an email and you will also receive um, um, uh, PDF with the, uh, with the bank transfer information. Click on that one and open the bank transfer information where to send if you're in United States or Europe or where to send if you're in Canada. So that's very straightforward, very easy. And that one, I don't think you saw the PDF format because it's in another window, but and that's the case. Um, once you do that, you can go back to your homepage. And the third one is buying with uh, any crypto. You click here, click crypto purchase, and let's say that you want to buy with Bitcoin or any other. Same thing, you have uh, a number of uh, AUXs you want to buy or AGXs or, or Avalanche. Review the order, it's gonna be uh, 0.13 Bitcoins for those many um, AUXs. And uh, same, same, confirm. And it's going to display the QR code where you are going to send the Bitcoin to. And this is the case. You have time limit of five minutes uh, before the price expires. So try to do it as fast as you can. You need to send uh, and copy the address is send Bitcoin to this address or scan this QR code from your mobile wallet and complete the transaction. I confirm that I have sent the payment. Add the transaction ID as Grant explained what the transaction ID is and submit. So that's how you buy also very straightforward, very easy. These other two have a huge rate of success. Um, credit cards are the ones that are fun. Uh, swap, swap option is, it's just like buying, but you're going to swap current assets that you have for other assets in, in your wallet. Let's say you want to exchange AGXs for uh, low tokens or for AUX, click there. It's going to give you an amount of, of um, AUXs that you're going to receive, or if you want to buy low tokens with it also, you can do that. In this case, I just want to exchange for gold and I go review order. And then that's my order right there. And I place the order and type here my password. And you're going to see the swap. It's basically uh, to swap silver for gold or, or silver. In this case, for example, uh, what we are encouraging members then, remember, is to exchange um, AGX or AUX for um, Avalanche. So let's right. say you go here, you go AUX, and then you're going to um, get some Avalanche. And you're going to point, point one of an AUX. You're going to get some avalanche, or let's say. So, 
so actually, um, the important thing to note here is that your AGX and AUX have to be on Avalanche. They can't be on Cisrolex, right? So, and then I, I played around with it yesterday. I did one AGX and got some AVAX. I did one AGX, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, worked like a charm. Yeah. And then that, that's that's how you do it, right? You, you click uh, here on the on the asset and get the exchange. And uh, I don't have much AUX here, but uh, in any case, so that's that's a procedure, what, right? What if you did what if you did one AGX? Uh, hum? Yeah, I can do AGX. I just can just do one. One AGX. And I'm going to get some avalanche. Yeah. And then uh, that's zero three, okay, of an avalanche. Yeah. And then uh, you review the order, and then you say place the order, okay. confirm with your password, and then you're going to see a message coming up here that you're going to be receiving right there. There it is. Order successfully. Now, yeah. now you have enough. AVAX to execute more transactions. Yeah. Um, that's the swap, very, very functional. Here you can see the uh, history on the orders that you have. And then here uh, you have some more history. Uh, I don't see something coming in here. Perhaps we need to check with our wallet team to help us to see the history here. But, um, but in any case, that's how you execute this. Yeah, great, thank you. So now, <clears throat> We've done, you know, uh, buy sell, uh, buy send swap, and uh, and uh, now you've got some AVAX in your wallet, and you've got some LTC. So now you want to vest your LTC. So we click on that. In this case here, these have probably been already vested. I was to guess. I, I added uh, one thousand LTCs. Oh, okay, good. So we can vest those. Complete the vesting. Perfect. Let me just uh, refresh here because I did back and forth. So. Good. So now there should be a deposit button that, that, that presents itself because it almost looks like this is a completed transaction. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the general idea is if you haven't vested your LTC yet, and, but you do have some AVAX gas, okay? A dollar USD gives you 14 transactions. You, you're going to click on Vest LTC. There'll be a button that says Deposit. Because really, your LTC, you're depositing your entire position, okay? there's It's either Deposit or Don't Deposit. And if you don't deposit, you can't do anything with it. So the idea is, is we deposit. Now, the clock starts ticking for 30 days. In 30 days, you'll get 4% of your position offered to you in the form of load token avalanche. And then, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you know, uh, Augusto and the, the person that does our user interface, they're working to make uh, the, staking, uh, the staking option available within the wallet. So they probably have another two weeks, okay? And we're on kind of summer holidays right now, but you know, they're working it into their schedule. And uh, you know when it's when it's uh, before it's time, we'll have a chance to test it. It works, and then people will be able to stake. And uh, of course, as we mentioned in our vesting and staking uh, support uh, AMA, we can't load cannot stake automatically for you. So you're going to have to be like. But we are working on a flag that says, "Hey, you know, you've got these uh, low token avalanche to stake," and then basically. You know, you, you, you can stake your uh, your uh, low token avalanche as long as you've got some AVAX gas. So the rest of these, we got some some categories left over, the FAQs and the contact us. They're pretty well self-explanatory. And uh, the FAQ section, you know, is uh, we've got the, the, the load.fi forward slash media uh, website is uh, nearing completion. So we're going to start populating, you know, uh, a lot of our material on the media site, centralizing everything, so that we just send out one, uh, email, uh, one uh, website, and everything is there. So you know, we're transitioning over to we're transitioning over to uh, a media library. So I guess that's pretty well it uh, for now. Uh, Hum Grant, can you add anything that maybe I've missed or? One thing I can add. Okay. Uh, 
I know people have a uh, find it a bit cumbersome at times to log in and they're continually having to uh, either input their username and password or they're having to input the username and password and then put in their 12 words again uh, in order to avoid some of that so what you can do is when you log into your wallet and you reach the point where you've got your pin page showing you can bookmark the pin page so that the next time you come to logging into your wallet you simply go to your bookmarks and click on the uh, the load wallet and you're going to go straight to your uh, uh, pin uh, pin uh, 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 screen so and then uh, but <clears throat> when once you're done and when you log out you want to make sure that as um, Dan mentioned previously you hit the refresh button so that it takes you out of the wallet completely because you don't want to be leaving your uh, wallet exposed you know if you were out with your phone and you lost your phone then somebody could access your wallet uh, so it's important that when you do finish with the, the load wallet is to make sure that you uh, uh, hit the refresh uh, icon and log out of your wallet and I think Apple's got a little different take on logging out. They don't really necessarily have a, a refresh icon, or do they? No, the refresh uh, for the Apple phones. If you if you if you're on your pin code screen, you'll notice in the bottom right corner there's three little dots. So if you click on those three little dots, it'll give you an option. It'll give you a number of options, including uh, reload, and that's where you're going to see the refresh arrow as well. So you just hit reload. And it'll take you back to your home screen, your pin page. Great. Thank you, Grant. Uh, Han, anything? Yeah, uh, I want to um, talk a, a little bit about the Wallet Connect feature that I have on my screen. Um, the Wallet Connect feature is good for uh, power users or not so much power users, but people that want to connect the Load Wallet to any other of the thousands of uh, DeFi uh, Web3 wallets out there. So. Um, how you do it, like for example, you open your your MetaMask, for example, and MetaMask, you can wallet connect your um, your uh, load wallet to MetaMask or Trader Joe. And by doing that, you, you connect the both of them so you can move assets back and forth. Or sometimes you can even pay for products or services using your wallet connect feature. Um, that's a feature that is uh, very easy to use. Um, but we do give you a piece of advice do not um uh, do wallet connect with people that you don't know because some people can steal a lot of your assets by wallet connecting uh your wallet to uh, uh questionable um uh, destinatory so you have to make sure that when you're using wallet connect you're using it in um in a in a place where you trust that, uh, that that you're connecting to the right wallet, let's say um, um, Trader Joe, for example, or or Core Wallet or At Atomic Wallet, any of the other ones that are out there. Uh, in this case, what you do, you select the Avalanche mainnet, and you are going to look at the address that you're connecting to. And here, you're going to scan the QR code of that wallet connect uh, function, or paste a code that you can collect from that website. Don't paste a code here from somebody that you do not know. Uh, anybody that is approaching you claiming to be uh, from load, uh, that wants to help you and all that one and give you a code to paste, just don't do that because they can steal your assets by doing that. So just be very careful. Uh, and, and more than uh, telling you about functionality on the load wallet or Wallet Connect is basically uh, telling you to be cautious because a lot of members mm -hmm. have lost assets by uh, uh, by you know naively putting a code here and the bad guys can just steal your information i'm sure that uh, um, some of those guys are are listening to this conversation so um, you have to be careful guys on how you interact with wallet connect okay yeah thank you Ham. that's uh, that's a very good uh, explanation there in a way it kind of reminds us that there's a self-education component to this sphere that we're in, right? And so, and so, you know, YouTube and, and ask questions and watch video and, you know, you really do have to kind of know what you're doing if you're, you know, if you're reaching out to other wallets and or using Wallet Connect or, you know, 
the 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 responsibility does fall on the user to to have a certain level of uh, of skill set. So just saying, uh, as our wallet develops, we're going to be doing AMAs to sort of introduce features, benefits, you know, to the user base. And you know, if uh, if this is kind of new to you, you can you can you know basically evolve along with us, because uh, in a way that's exactly what we're doing. So. I'll just kind of leave it at that. And uh, I guess if uh, we have any questions, now would be a good time for us to take questions. Um, I'm going to, like, we have a question right there on the screen, Dan, that says that, uh, Edward says that, why does Wallet Connect not show anything? I'm just doing a quick test connecting my load wallet to Trader Joe. Um, uh, I have Trader Joe open right now. You cannot see it because it's on another screen, but I'm going to click or connect the wallet on Trader Joe, and then I'm going to go to, um, wallet connect. I click there and then I have a QR code on my screen. I'm going to click open and I'm going to copy that address. So I copy that code from Trader Joe and I'm going to paste that code right here on this um, uh, field. I paste the code from Trader Joe right there and then, uh, and then I approve. And now I'm connected to Trader Joe. When I go back to Trader Joe, I see my wallet and my assets showing in Trader Joe, which I couldn't see before. So that's how it works, Edward. Um, it's working right now on my end. It shows you that I'm connected to Trader Joe and I can connect to Core Wallet and many others here uh, as I wish to that have that feature. I don't know if it makes sense, Dan. Sure. You know, um... I guess uh, they might not. They might need to re-listen to your explanation, but for the most part, I think you covered it. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions right now. I think it's a nice refreshment. But um, Grant, any top hot topics in support right now that you want to discuss while we are waiting? Um, not really. I just. Uh... I mean, the issue with uh, making it easier for people to log in and out of their wallet was a big one because I know people find it very awkward having to input their 12 words all of the time and uh, their username and password. So having this bit of a shortcut uh, certainly will make things easier for accessing their wallet and, and uh, you know, executing transactions. So. Yeah. Um, I guess that topic, uh, Dan, that you mentioned about clicking on the refresh button right here on the top left, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Reload, clicks there, and just logs you back to the beginning. And that's, oh. that's a safe, right? Yeah. So, Ham, can you show your screen? I'm sorry, guys. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I don't think we can actually see your browser there. So, you know, where would you go? <laughs> I got it here somewhere. There it is. Okay. This is the refresh icon. This is what you're looking for. And I know that Windows and Apple are a little bit different. For we know, Apple will be on the other side. And uh, But generally on Windows, it's top left. Next to your URL address bar, you'll see a little icon there. Just clicking on that refreshes you right back to your six-digit pin page. And uh, I think as Grant mentioned, you can bookmark that. Yep. And, then, uh, and then just pull up your bookmark. The, the wallet is browser specific, which means that once you set up the wallet on a particular browser, we prefer uh, Google Chrome. Uh, it tends to be more stable. If you're not a big Google fan, you can just dedicate one tab of Google Chrome to your wallet and then only use Google Chrome just to access your wallet. And uh, for the most part, it's been, it's been pretty good, you know, and um, try that. And the yeah. shortcuts, the shortcut seems to work as well with Safari and um, Brave too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, today, you know, was to just kind of go uh, do a walk through the wallet, and uh, you know, we covered a lot of territory. It's uh, it's going to be available as an AMA. I see now we are almost forty five minutes into this, so maybe what we'll do is we'll just wrap it up here, and. Um, and uh, thank you all for for joining us today. Uh, basically, this was this was a tutorial on yeah. uh, on a walkthrough of the wallet.
So thank um, you for your time. We and have we have sweetie so oh. sweetie asking a question then. Okay. So if I have AVAX in MetaMask. Can I use my load wallet to receive the AVAX transaction? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. You can send AVAX from your MetaMask to your load wallet by following a, following the send receive option that we discussed earlier. Yeah. Okay. Um, here, Bob has is wallet connect a one time thing, or do you need to do it every time you log out? Uh, for the most part, it's a one time thing. Um, but uh, sometimes, for whatever reason, it unplugs, and you need to plug it, plug in again. But for the most part, is part is a one time thing. I I would expect that that's for security reasons, right? And it it has it probably times out after a certain amount of time, and probably not a bad thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think for the most part, I guess we're done. Uh, if you have any question, uh, you can always. Uh, reach out to support.load.one and uh, we're going to be having this load fi slash media page where all the amas that we have had plus other videos plus other webinars that we release are going to be stored and available for you guys uh, we will have also white papers uh pitch decks um marketing yeah. materials all of that it's, it's going to be our centralized go-to yeah Okay. For anything uh, customer facing. So, all right, everyone, thanks a lot and uh, happy Friday. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Grant. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, we're logging off now. Um, see you next Friday. We'll, we'll come up with a nice topic to talk about. Okay. Bye. Bye now.